Good morning guys! On today's video, we are going to answer frequently asked questions again that are posted in our comment section in one of our travel updates vlog. Here we go! <laughs> So this is how we are going to address our questions that were posted in the comment section of our vlog. So if the question is in Filipino, I will answer it in Filipino. And if the question is in English, I will try to answer them in English. I have received comments that they couldn't understand what I was talking about in my videos because I was speaking in Tagalog. So if you guys have questions or concerns, you can drop the comment in one of the travel update videos that I have. You can ask it in English or you can ask it in Tagalog, whichever you prefer, so I can answer it respectively. Just for a recap, we do travel update videos. If you have concerns and questions or you need procedures and stuff on what you need to do to go home to the Philippines in time of the pandemic, we have videos for 9A visa process. We have videos for dual citizenship process. We also have actual videos on our arrival in Manila as well as our departure from LA to Manila. So we have all that in our vlog. We also have several videos for frequently asked questions. If you want to go through all of that, we have those in our vlog as well. So for your reference, we all have the travel updates in our vlog that you can use or you can refer if you have questions when you travel to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic. So for our first question, this is from Elizabeth Daos. How if you have done swab test here in the U.S., can you just use that instead of doing the test again? Miss Elizabeth, even if you have undergone COVID-19 swab test in the U.S., Manila Airport or the Manila Authority is not going to accept that as your swab test result because they also have a mandatory swab test when you get to Manila. So even if you have a negative test result coming from the U.S., you will still undergo another swab test when you get to Manila because that is the protocol for arriving passengers abroad. Our next one is from Elisa San Agustin. Ang mister ko ay U.S. citizen na. Ako naman ay green card holder pa. Pwede ba siya sumama sa akin pa uwi sa Pilipinas kahit U.S. passport ang hawak niya? Thanks. Miss Elisa, Pwede po siyang umuwi kasama kayo, pero po, kailangan po siyang mag-apply ng 9A visa. Kasi hindi po siya makakapasok or hindi po siya iaalaw na makapasok sa Pilipinas kung US passport lang yung gamit niya. Ito po kasi yung bagong regulation ng Philippine government with the Bureau of Immigration na lahat ng foreign nationals with Filipino affiliation ay kailangan pong mag-avail ng 9A visa. Meron po tayong video niyan kung paano i-process ang 9A visa. Uh, pwede niyo po yung gawing reference sa isa sa mga travel update videos ko. Uh, andun po yung mga requirements. And meron din pa akong gagawing bagong video about 9A visa for additional documents kasi nangihingi na po ang lahat ng Philippine Consulate ng mga additional documents uh, just to prove that you are affiliated with a Filipino national. So yun po, Miss Elisa, pwede pong sumama ni Mr. sa inyo sa Pilipinas pero kailangan niya pong mag-avail ng 9A visa para makapasok po siya. Our next one is from J. Marie Galisa. Hi, I have a foreign boyfriend. He is planning to go in Philippines on December. Is that possible? Now he is in Malaysia for work. J. Marie, unfortunately, boyfriends or fiancé, uh, as of right now, the tourist visa for them is suspended until further notice. So those people that are only allowed or can avail tourist visa or the 9A visa are the people that has 
Filipino affiliation. For example, you are a spouse of a Filipino, you are a child of a Filipino, or you are a parent of a Filipino. So those are the passenger type that can avail the 9A visa at the moment. For boyfriend and fiancé, uh, you really have to wait till this ban is lifted, hopefully very soon. But for your question, the answer is no right now. Our next one is from Joanna Generoso. Hello po, since I am a dual citizen, ano pong passport ang nilagay nyo sa pag-fill up sa Red Cross? And another question is, nagpa-prebook na po ba kayo ng hotel? Thanks. So yung unang question niya is, she's a dual citizen, ano po daw bang passport ang nilagay sa pag-fill up ng Red Cross? Usually, dun sa Red Cross or sa ECIF, yung hinihingi lang po nila dun is passport number. Hindi naman sila nanghihingi dun ng Philippine passport or US passport. Basta ang hinihingi lang nila dun is passport number. So, whatever passport you have right now, yung passport number po ang ilagay nyo doon. So, if you are carrying a US passport, yung number ng US passport nyo. And if you are carrying a Philippine passport, yung Philippine passport number din po yung ilalagay nyo. Ganun lang po kasimple yon And then, for your question, kung nagpa-prebook ba ako ng hotel, yes, nagpa-book po kami ng hotel three, day, three days before ang flight namin sa Philippines. Kasi mas effective yun eh. Kasi, ang mangyayari, kapag nagpa-book ka way ahead of time, may chance pa na makancel yung flight mo, eh, hindi ka na marirefund ang hotel niyan. So, it's better talaga that you have confirmed that your flight is really good to go before pa kayo magpa-book ng hotel. This one is from Emmanuel Peregrino. Hello, pwede po bang makatravel ang buntis at may kasamang below 12 years old sa mga airports po? Makakaalis po ba sila? Thanks. When it regards sa mga buntis po, uh, Sir Emmanuel, uh, depende po yan kung ano na po ba, how far na po ba ang pagbubuntis ni Mrs. kasi may requirements din po or may protocol din pong uh, sinusunod ang mga airline if you are on a certain ano na uh, period sa iyong pagbubuntis, eh hindi na po kayo papayagang magbiyahe niyan pero kung if you are on your second trimester I think they would allow you to fly but to be sure po tawagan nyo po yung airline kung saan kayo magbook para masigurado po talaga na papayag sila na makauwi yung misis nyo sa Pilipinas on her condition. Makaka-travel naman ang mga 12 years old below na mga bata kasi nung umuwi kami, meron nga mga 8 years old, 7 years old na nakasabayan namin. So, I don't really think na may ban when it comes to minor children as long as ando naman yung parents, hindi lang yung mag-isa sila kasi hindi naman allowed magbiyahe yung mga minor without the guardian or the parents. So, like I said, coordinate with the airline kung aling airline po ang pagbubukan nyo ng ticket pa ng Pilipinas para po makasigurado kayo na papayag silang makauwi yung misis nyo na buntis. Another one from Armenda Zapanta. Hello po. Like na like ko po ang explanation nyo. Very clear. Thank you so much. Ask ko lang po, meron po bang nade-deny sa pagkuha ng dual? Salamat po. I don't think may na-deny sa pagkuha ng dual citizenship kung ikaw naman ay ano talaga, yung Uh, candidate ka for dual citizenship. Meron sigurong nadideny, pero yun talaga yung mga hindi talaga pwedeng mag-apply ng dual citizenship. Pero kung ikaw naman ay former Filipino at nag-naturalize ka sa ibang bansa, I don't think na madideny ka for dual citizenship. Ang next natin is from Star Star. Hello sis, if 9G visa as employment visa, It's long-term visa valid until 2020. Is it allowed to enter the Philippines now? Actually, this one I have inquired with the Bureau of Immigration. And this is the reply to me when I inquired about this 9G visa or the employment visa. So this was the reply from the Bureau of Immigration. Good day! 9A visa holders are still not allowed to enter the country unless they have Filipino spouse or children. Thank you. 
So as I understood it, if you have affiliation with a Filipino national, you are allowed to travel using that visa. But if you don't, you are still not allowed to enter the Philippines. Ang next po natin ay si Sing Luto Dengar. Hi po, yung fiancé ko sa UK, pwede ba siya mag-apply ng tourist visa sa Pinas? We get married kasi ate, thanks sa reply. Ang mga fiancé or boyfriend right now ay hindi po sila makaka-avail ng visa or the 9A visa kasi may specific category or may specific passenger type lang po na pwede mag-avail ng 9A ng 9A visa sa ngayon. Ito po yung mga may affiliation sa isang Pinoy like kung ikaw ay asawa, kung ikaw ay anak, or kung ikaw ay magulang. Outside of that, wala na pong pwedeng makapag-avail ng 9A visa unless na lift na yung ban from the Philippine government sa mga tourists. Ang sunod natin ay si Lori Lynn Silva. Ma'am, ask ko lang po kasi nag-tourist po ako sa Singapore. Pero nag-work ako dito ng 2 years. So it means non-OFW po ako. Meron po ba na facility para sa mga non-OFW? Salamat po. Kapag non-OFW po kasi kayo, Ma'am Lorilyn, kagaya ko, non-OFW po ako. Nung umuwi po kami ng Pilipinas, e eh shoulder po namin lahat ng expenses. I am not so sure kung meron silang facility para sa mga non-OFW na hindi makaka-avail or hindi makaka-afford na magbayad ng sarili nilang hotel. If I were you, I will coordinate with the right agency. Sa Coast Guard, pwede kayong magtanong sa Coast Guard since sila yung nag-organize talaga ng mga steps dun sa airport. I'm not so sure who is the right agency na tatawagan regarding your concern. Pero may nabasa naman ako last time na isang non-OFW na wala talaga siyang pangbayad, eh, nag-provide naman ang government ng facility para dun. So, what you can do kapag nag-land ka ng Manila or gusto mo talagang makasiguro, eh, makipag-coordinate po tayo sa Philippine Coast Guard. Baka may maisagot po sila dyan since, like I said, sila ang nag-organize ng mga steps sa airport. At kapag hindi naman kayo nakapag-inquire, as soon as mag-land kayo sa Manila, is inform nyo po sila agad. Ang next natin is from Cynthia Kalumpit. Ito medyo mahaba-haba yung question niya. Ma'am, does it need a 9A visa or temporary visitor's visa para asawa ko? May anak kami pero not yet married. Every year siya na uwi. Kaso, natama lockdown noong March. Ngayon, plan niya this coming December. Allowed kaya siya maka-enter dito sa Pinas without any visa? Kasi one month lang naman siya dito. As every uwi niya talaga is one month lang stay niya dito. So, Miss Cynthia, regardless kung ilang days or weeks or months magstay ng uh, asawa niyo sa Pilipinas, kapag uuwi po siya ng Pilipinas, is kailangan po niya talaga ng 9A visa. Sabi niyo, hindi pa po kayo kasal pero may anak kayo, makaka-avail pa rin siya ng visa. Ang question ko po dyan is ilang taon po yung bata. Kasi makaka-avail si mister nyo ng 9A visa kung minor pa yung bata kasi nandun yun sa passenger type A. Parent of a minor children na Filipino. So yun po yung tanong ko kung ilang taon na po ba yung bata. Kung minor pa is makaka-avail po si mister ng visa. We have another one from E. Roberts. Hi madam. Not related to the content of your video, but can I ask if my husband still need a tourist visa to enter the Philippines? I'm still a Filipino citizen, and how about foreign son? Does he need a tourist visa as well? We're planning to visit Philippines by November. Thanks a lot. E. Roberts, with your case, yes, the husband still needs to avail the 9A visa. When it comes to your son, you can apply for the report of birth because by birth, he is a dual citizen. You just need to report your son's birth to the nearest Philippine consulate in your area, then apply for his Philippine passport. The other option also for your son is he can also avail for the visa. So either options will work for your husband, the 9A visa, 
for your son, you can do the report of birth, or you can also apply the 9A visa for him. Just a disclaimer, guys, I am not an immigration lawyer. The answers that I provide to those comments posted in one of our travel videos are based on our actual experience and based on research talking to the Bureau of Immigrations if my followers or if my subscribers has concerns that I couldn't answer on my own, I refer it to the Bureau of Immigration. I call them or I message them if my answer is going to be correct to the concerned question posted in our blog. Please take note that you can use all my travel videos as a guide or as a reference if you are planning to go to the Philippines in time of the pandemic. But please, please, please inquire or research or call the right agency or the right office for the documents or any other additional requirements that you will need when you go home to the Philippines as these protocols and procedures are subject to change from time to time this may be the update for today but it will change in the next few days so you really need to make sure that you are up to date on all travel updates every time. So ayan, natapos na naman natin ang isang parte ng mga frequently asked questions ng mga kababayan natin na uuwi ng Pilipinas during the time of the pandemic. Like I said, if you have concerns and questions, you can drop a comment in one of our travel update videos. If you are a foreign national if, or if you are a foreigner who's got concerns and questions regarding your travel to the Philippines, you can drop me a comment in one of my travel update videos and I will answer it as soon as I can. And to those who have more questions about immigration and travel to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic, don't be hesitated to drop a comment in one of our travel videos and I will try my best to answer everybody. So I will see you guys on our next Frequently Asked Question videos. We have more to come and hopefully I was able to answer or I am able to answer all your inquiries regarding traveling to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic. Be safe everyone and thank you so much for the continuous support on this channel, The Eaton Squad. And if you are new to this channel, I welcome you all to The Eaton Squad family. And if you are not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so I can give you updates of the latest travel updates going to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic. I'll see you guys soon. Be safe. God bless. Mwah.